sikap re aju den to o for wa ba daka. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I've been a little involved with The Sims 3 lately. What I'm really here to do is inform you that this game is really fantastic and it's very difficult not to fall in love with it. It's got all the charm of the first two games and its expansions, and it retains all the things that made the previous games such a mainstream success. But it also introduces cool, robust new features, which makes The Sims 3 feel fresh, yet entirely comfortable at the same time. It's a game almost everybody can get lost in for hours at a time. Pilash, Nick Follett. Arbo. Arbo Gwitchney. Zelka Blotman. So maybe when I talk like that, I can't deliver the kind of charm the actual Sims can. But there's no doubt that the Simlish gibbering they've been spouting is a big part of the wit and charm that has captivated so many millions since the original game was released in 2000. But if you've somehow missed the bandwagon in years past, here's a quick rundown of The Sims 3. It's a people simulator. <laughs> like in the previous games, you create virtual lives called Sims and you help them maintain every aspect of their existence. Just like real people, they have relatively mundane needs. They need to eat, sleep, empty their bladders. They need to have fun and get together with people too. And of course, they need to go to school, to get jobs and make money, and they need a roof over their heads. You are their puppeteer, balancing the needs of your Sims, driving their goals, and developing them as you see fit. This sounds somewhat ordinary. After all, we already have to balance these things in our own lives. Yet there's a big virtual dollhouse appeal to the series that keeps people addicted for hours, days, weeks, and even years. The Sims 3 is no different. Actually, it's even more compelling than the previous games. Perhaps the biggest reason for this is that more than the previous games, there's a real society at work. In the past, your Sims could leave home and visit other locales, but it was presented in a very disjointed fashion. Now, you have the run of the town. Whether you want to take your family to dinner, practice guitar at the park, swim at the public pool, or explore the graveyard after dark, it's as easy as selecting your destination from the town map and driving over or taking a taxi or even riding a bicycle or running if you're so inclined. You've got shops to visit, an art gallery, a library, a gym, other households, and all of it exists in a seamless suburb that feels really lived in. It's a big improvement that goes a long way towards making the town feel like a living entity. So there's a lot of everyday stuff to do, though The Sims 3 has a way of making even the dullest sounding activities feel important and fulfilling. Your sims can enhance their skills by performing all sorts of tasks, from gardening, to reading, to playing chess, to repairing dishwashers and more. If you felt in the previous games that things felt really aimless, there are short-term and long-term goals to focus on. Short-term goals are specific to your sim and could involve things as simple as making the bed or something more involved like having a baby. When you complete them, you earn reward points that you can then spend on enhancements, like never again having to pee, or always throwing the perfect party. Your lifetime goal takes a lot more time, and you'll select it when you first create your sim. This could be being an international super spy, or being incredibly popular, or becoming a famous news anchor. It's the best mix of freeform sandbox gameplay and specific goals the series has seen. If you like the game because it's so open-ended, you still have that. But if you wanted something more specific to aim for, The Sims 3 has that too. But living out your life is only part of the addiction. The creation elements are also incredibly important aspects of the game, and The Sims 3 offers the most robust tools yet. When creating a Sim, you've got all sorts of options for physical customization. Different hairstyles, clothing, accessories, facial hair, makeup, eye height and color, and so on. It's fairly in-depth without getting overly complex, but the creative style options will make this aspect particularly interesting for those that like tweaking every aspect of your look. You can choose from a staggering number of patterns, even from those meant for house exteriors and floors, and then use that as a pattern for clothing. Change the colors using the color wheel, sliders, or preset hues, and you can create a lovely, subtle look or an absolutely bizarre concoction. But it isn't just the look of your sims you will customize. You will also choose up to five traits that will govern how your sims behave. Make her insane, or a kleptomaniac, or a musical virtuoso, or a workaholic, or a great kisser, 
or all of the above. The lot customization is also more in-depth than ever, so if you enjoy the virtual architecture of the series, the Creative Style features will let you get just as in-depth with your home and gardens, giving you plenty of room to be creative. The interface is intuitive as always, letting you create and modify homes with ease, and the prices for items for your house and improvements for your lot are balanced well with the continuing growth of your sims. Part of the addiction is earning more money to forever improve your home, to get better stuff, to climb the corporate ladder, and so on. Obviously, while you can fast forward time like before, this all happens gradually, so if you need immediate gratification, you probably already know that The Sims 3 isn't your kind of game. Yet if you've poo-pooed The Sims games in the past, this one might surprise you. It feels more organic, more alive, and thanks to colorful visuals, cute animations, and a great jaunty soundtrack that surpasses that of The Sims 2, it's hard to resist its delights. It's the surprises that will keep you smiling most often. It would be impossible to describe everything that can and will happen as you play, but whether it's throwing a birthday party for your toddler right before she magically turns into a child, or dealing with a crying baby in dirty diapers in the middle of the night, the ridiculous behavior and virtual socializing will make you care about these digital people. If there's one big criticism you could levy towards the game, it would be more towards what it doesn't do than what it does do. Gameplay elements that have appeared in the seemingly endless Sims and Sims 2 expansions are missing here, like pets, or seasonal weather cycles, or magic spells. These seem like obvious holes left for future expansions to fulfill. There are also the ongoing pathfinding issues that we've seen in the series for quite some time now. It's a lot better now, but there are still times when getting your Sim to get from one place to another in a crowded room is a lot more laborious than it should be. Of course, there is more in this package. There are video editing tools and other features online that make it easy to interact with other players and share content, including a whole free town to download if you register the game. But what you need to know is this. The Sims 3 does more for the franchise than The Sims 2 did. It feels just right, striking a wonderful balance between the familiar and the fresh. Unless you're too jaded to be charmed by its sweet-natured wiles, the Sims 3 is a wonderful rejuvenation for a series that continues to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers alike. Brekno Biznal, Mashku, Bliki Fakuna, Nabia. Ho, Himo, Unistem. Hmm. Ha. Abluki. Don't get you!